Evening, welcome to the Derby debrief from Rams TV. I'm Ian Bradley with former Derby County captain Sean Barker alongside here to bring you some reaction to a defeat for Derby today after beating Bolton in a crucial game last weekend. The Rams have lost at Northampton Town this afternoon by a single goal to nil. Sam Hoskins strike in the first half was the difference. Derby missed a couple of glorious chances first half, didn't create a great deal beyond that and they had Sonny Bradley sent off in the closing stages as well. Looks as though he'll be banned for the next three games. Injuries mounting too. Nathaniel Mendes Lang was withdrawn in the second half with a hamstring problem. We'll hear from Paul Warren on that shortly. Nothing changes immediately in terms of the League One table. Derby the only side in the top seven going in to play today, uh, but it may have big implications down the line. And Sean Barker, um, at the very least, it was a missed opportunity. It was. We, we mentioned that before the game, um, with other teams not playing around us today. There's a chance to give ourselves a seven-point gap uh, from second to, to third. Um, the highs and the, the um, kind of feeling of euphoria after the previous game, uh, we're back down with with a bang after today's uh, performance and results. So it was an opportunity. It's just whether we turned up and took it. There's been a few times this season in particular where the, the opportunities have arose and we've not taken it and we felt like it was on a different path of late because of the performances, because of big gains, because of results. Um, the reality is we just didn't turn off and we didn't do enough this afternoon to win the game. There was a couple of chances, yes, but you'd hope that we'd really kind of um, make the most of this chance that we haven't done. Yeah, so disappointing for Derby after the euphoria of beating Bolton in that crucial game at Pride Park. Last weekend, uh, let's bring you some reaction from the Sixfield Stadium. Here's the Derby boss. Frustrated, disappointed. I didn't think we were amazing. I still think we created enough uh, chances to win. Um, but uh, it was disappointing in the first half. We had a little bit of control, not a lot, but the goal we conceded was um, farcical, really. So that was uh, sad. And in fairness to uh, Northampton, and congratulate them for their win. But the chance they took was harder than the chances we missed and sometimes it's determined on that and you need your your moments to go your way and they didn't and then second half I just felt uh, we got uh, more and more frustrated uh, you know with there's a lot of stoppages a lot of laying down a lot of this a lot of that a lot of stop to the play and we just didn't look very cohesive that's the honest truth <clears throat> excuse me um, and I just didn't think we had a. We didn't just put our foot on the ball as much as we would like, really. So in the end, it just became one of them uh, games where you, you know, as a player, you possibly think it isn't going to be your day, but you have to try and make it your day. I thought we put enough decent balls in, enough set pieces, uh, enough half chances, but we just didn't take one today. And it's a, a really disappointing day because obviously we got an injury to Nat. Um, Sonny's been sent off, so uh, as bad days go, it's right up there. You mentioned there about you felt that you got a little bit frustrated. Is that why you just maybe needed to be a little bit calmer? Did you feel, was that on the ball or was that yeah, just generally? I just didn't think we had um, yeah, enough calm on the ball. Like obviously, in the end, we had uh, Corey and Connor uh, in the middle because so I just thought we'd be able to you know, move the ball better. We got it in wide positions. I thought Blackett Taylor came on and showed parts. and like, Obviously, everything he does isn't going to come off, but a lot of good things happened, and I thought... Prior to that being injured, he was the one really leading the charge, really. And then uh, Wardy and Kane down the right were causing problems. But, um, yeah, we just didn't have enough cutting edge to our play. And every time we got the ball, and this isn't a criticism, but uh, Northampton literally got everyone behind it bar one. Um, we played uh, too slow at times. I thought first half we moved the ball from side to side with you know no purpose. I think we should have moved the ball quicker and and got out after him quicker. And I've always said it, you know, in the dressing room and out of the dressing room, you can't waste 45 minutes, you can't. And I felt like we did first half, and then second half we were always chasing it. In fairness to Month, he nearly scored an absolute screamer, what broke the post. But, you know, it's obviously us trying to chase it, and the longer it went on, the more frustrated we got. And, you know, I've said for, you know, all week, it's not going to be like a march to the promotion party. Like, it isn't going to be easy. It's going to be, you know, there are going to be days like this. There are going to be parts in games when you're frustrated because you haven't took the lead or you're losing. And that's when you just have to have a bit of calm. I just didn't think we had enough calm today. And maybe it's like, you know, an overspill, the fact the lads are so desperate to do well that, you know, it's uh, affected our level of performance because it wasn't really representative of an away performance for us this season so 
that's my overall view, really. You've had sort of contrasting emotions. A week ago, you had the high of beating Bolton. Today, obviously, you're disappointed. Is it? And you've spoken a lot about trying to keep everything quite level. Is that another challenge for you? This not necessarily challenge, but another week where you've got to just reinforce the message. Say, look, six games to go, second in the league. Just keep calm. Yeah, really. I mean, I didn't. I didn't think we were uh, great today. Uh, but you have to always respect the opposition. They made it difficult. It's a bobbly pitch. You know, everything's a bit more away from home. But like I said, I still thought we had enough chances to win the game, but we didn't take them. And sometimes that's the case. My disappointment was I just didn't. Th- I didn't think we showed enough of the character, really. As in, like get on the ball, be a bit braver, move the ball a little bit quicker. Um, and that's my disappointment because there's a good opportunity today to put a good marker down, and we haven't taken it. And you know, on our fixtures. Not that it ever goes by this, but if you look at the fixtures, it looks one of the possibly easier games. That doesn't That's not fair to the opposition but because you're away from home as well. But on paper, people might think, oh, that, you know, that's a nice one. And, and that's what's disappointing because, you know, we've now got uh, back-to-back tough ones, um, which possibly suits us more. I don't know. You mentioned Nat getting an injury. I guess it's too early, but what's the situation with him? Well, he took a challenge down here and he said he felt his ammy. Um, so I don't know if he felt his ammy as in like he's, he's took a hit and it felt sore or he's pulled something. My honest thing is that he's pulled something because uh, Nat's been uh, really physically resilient for us and, and you know, played a lot of time and he's important to us. But yeah, we'll know more after the weekend. In terms of knowing more, Dwight Gale, Craig Forsyth and, and Tom Barquet are not here today. Have, have you got the sort of verdict on, on those at the minute? Yeah, uh, Foz uh, has done another part of his calf, a different part of his calf, so uh, I don't think uh, we'll see him again this season, unfortunately. Uh, Tom Barkhausen's out for another two to three weeks, uh, and similarly, uh, Dwight's out for that period of time as well. So, you know, obviously we had a different sort of shape to us today because sort of running out of attacking options but it's nice to have like Colo back that will give us another dimension so um, we'll have to um, look at the pack on Monday and and build up for a big game Friday and you mentioned that big game on Friday against Blackpool at Pride Park then Portsmouth of course follow just got to dust yourselves down and uh, and go again like you have all season yeah I mean I've said all the time you know don't get too high on wins you know like we haven't uh, but it was no, I'm not, you know, appreciate the fans who stayed and clapped the team off. It just wasn't representative of us. I'm not saying there wasn't effort there. There was effort there. But, you know, the little details today, the finishes and all that, we just weren't as good as we should be. Uh, that's the truth. So it's disappointing. Of course it is. But, you know, it can't. Uh, it's not catastrophic. Uh, we've got six games left, uh, I think. Is that right? Six left? Yeah, good. Got six games left um, to pick up the points that we need, and and maybe it's uh, I don't think it is, but you know maybe it's a, a wake up call for everyone to think look we're not we haven't just because we were four points clear like we've done it we haven't done anything we haven't achieved anything I just want the lads to realise like if the pressure comes on like that again and you're chasing the game you just got to breathe a little bit more and um, you know they're as devastated as anyone so we have to pick them up Monday and uh, look forward to the game at Pride Park. Uh, Paul Warren there, not good news on the injury front for the Rams back in action on Friday, of course, against Blackpool. Good Friday before they go to Portsmouth a week on Tuesday. What a massive game uh, that is, although they're all big, of course, uh, Sean. And um, he was right, the details just in every factor of the game, really, just not there today. They weren't. I think think it played into Northampton's favour. I think they uh, were happy sitting deeper and and restricting too much space for, for... players like Menes Lang and, and Wilson to get in behind. Um, they forced the ball inside where I thought they were really competitive. I thought they were probably better at the, the second balls and the duels. Um, and ultimately, we had chances, there's no doubt about it. We, we didn't make the most of those chances. But if, you, if you're looking to win a game of football, you have to think how many times you test the goalkeeper, how many clear-cut chances you create and how much control you have of the game. And I think that was a thing for me. There was no real control throughout the 90 minutes. We maybe had 10 minutes in that first half and didn't make the most of it. Um, And we've seen at times this season away from home not start the game particularly well, but still stay in it and kind of develop, you know, learn how to develop um, over the course of the game and, and pick the moments and make the most of those chances and opportunities that are created and we didn't do that uh, this afternoon and ultimately it ended up getting a bit frantic. We put balls into the box but without 
creating enough opportunities um, in those final third areas. So it was a disappointing afternoon. There's no two ways of going around it. Um, it was an opportunity. We didn't take it. I just didn't feel that individu individually uh, and collectively performances are at the standard that we've seen previously away from home. Uh, Derby only four shots on target. Um, they had two glorious chances both first half. Martin Waghorn's, I think, is more difficult the second time you see it, but you'd still expect him to score. And then Ebu Adams with a, with a header where, again, he does the right thing in the sense of he heads it down into the ground, which I think is what you're taught to do, but you've got to hit the target with one of those. Yeah, well, Ebu Adams has to hit, um, connect with the ball with, with more force. He, he didn't get the connection he needed. He, he headed the ball down and it goes up, but it was never testing the goalkeeper. The waggy chance was a good chance, especially with his quality and how good he is in around the box. It did go into him quite quickly and he had to react really quickly, but at that point as a strike, it's about keeping the ball down and hoping that the direction's there. Sometimes you can't pick your corner and you can't get the detail you want, but you, you have to make sure it hits the target. So they were two huge chances that weren't taken. The second half, obviously we saw changes. I thought we might see them at half time, which we've seen previously this season. It didn't happen. We waited 10, 15 minutes and then while you're chasing, there's always gaps open up. That While you're chasing, you always lose that little bit of control and the longer it went on, the more desperate we, we, we got. But there were set pieces, there were corners, there were balls into the box. I didn't think we made enough of them. Uh, by contrast, Sam Hoskins, the only real moment of quality for the game gives Northampton the goal. But you would still expect Derby with the way they played this season, particularly away from home, to have got something from this game. Yeah, the goal was, was avoidable, is, is probably a nice way to put it. Um, Wilson, I think, should have, should have had a, a free kick. He was probably the brightest player for, for Derby this afternoon. Um, but over the top, I thought Sonny Bradley should have done more with the first ball. He was in a good position to deal with it. it seemed to put the brakes on and you have to force um, the striker wide. You can't allow him back inside the pitch. And I think it was just tracking runners for, that allowed Hoskins to, to end up on the cross. It was a brilliant finish composed the detail that we talked about those are all bang on for Sam Hoskins and he gets his 15th of the season and even at that point we've seen times this season where we've recovered well we've, we've regained composure we've we've realized there's still a long way to go um, and yeah we, we just from that moment didn't really have what it needed to, uh, to to get all three points and win the game and a bit of a surprise because you know, 12 wins away from home this season shows you that we're one capable of, of doing it and two believe that we can do it. It just it didn't feel like we grabbed it this afternoon. Sonny Bradley back in the side today because of injury to Craig for Scythe. No Dwight Gale injury. Tom Barkay's an injury. We just heard from Paul Warren that Mendes Lang is, is struggling with something as well, a hamstring injury. And then Sonny Bradley is sent off in, in the closing moments. He'll miss the next three games if, if that red card is upheld. How concerned are you about, frankly, the number of bodies that Derby don't have available now ahead of a busy Easter? Yeah, well, it's, it's concerning. There's no doubt about it. They've, we've had times this season where you've looked and gone, you know, there's five or six key players that have been injured. That seems to be a pattern that we've seen this season. We've still managed because when you look at the bench, we've got quality. When you look at a couple of other players potentially returning in, in, in Colo, the fact that Wash got on the pitch again today... Uh, elders back so it is concerning you want your best players and you want um, especially in the defensive side your unit to be solid and consistent and with looks like Sonny's going to miss three if Foz is you know struggling which is a real shame because he was outstanding against Bolton every single detail is concerning but the six games to go it's about the togetherness it's about the fight it's about the desire to get over the line whoever that is uh, whoever you've got fit, we've got enough players with quality, with experience within the squad, whether we're slim with, with players injured or not. Um, at this point in the stage, uh, season, it's about just getting over the line, however that may come. And Derby got one of those bodies back from injury today. Marty Wycorn making his first start since October. Let's hear from him. Um, yeah, very disappointing. Um, knowing you're the kind of levels and standards we've set as a team, um, individually, collectively, just wasn't wasn't good enough for large parts of the game. Uh, start, I think we started the game relatively well. We had opportunities um, to score, and you've got to take them in games like this because you give them opportunities, they'll they play on it. As you can see, the game unfolded. You give them a, um, a way to kill time, delay the game, and it just it just bred a bit of uh, frustration. And yeah, it just wasn't wasn't good enough overall. It seemed like the goal came at a time when you were really on top and looking like you would score as well. Is that particularly frustrating? Yeah, I think that's what the kind of 
Uh, most disappointing thing about it is because we're playing well. We, we weren't carving them open wide open. It was just we were, we were getting a foothold in the game, um, and then just a kind of two or thing, two or three things before that allowed them to to get up the pitch and obviously get the goal, which is a bit of a sucker punch. But we need to bounce back. We need to react. We've got enough quality. We've got enough experience on the pitch to to manage these situations. And I don't think overall we've done that well enough. They'll look at it and say they defended well, but is the onus on you to break them down and find that route through? Yeah, one hundred percent. We knew what we're going to be up against. Uh, we know what they're about. We've done we've, we've done the homework on them, and yeah, each and every one of them. Um, we didn't do enough uh, for the full ninety, one hundred minutes, whatever it was, to to win the game. So we've got to we've got to look at it. Um, we've got to sit down, reassess it, and then obviously we've got some big games coming up. Um, we need to try and get away from the fact that obviously today is very disappointing. But we've been on a good run. We need to try and remember that and remember we're not any worse off as such. But it was, it was a big opportunity for us, we know. But we need to bounce back and um, finish the season, season well. Yeah, is it because of the fact there was an opportunity with other teams not playing as well? Is that add, add an extra level of disappointment to that? Yeah, I think you could probably look at you, you, you see the opportunities that are ahead of you and you think it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be an easy one. It's three points. It's just... But you need to turn up, you need to do the job and you need to finish the game, whether it's a one nil to us, whatever way it is, you just gotta find a way to win. And yeah, today we'll fall short with that and we need to look at it and we need to have a look at hard, hard look uh, long hard look at ourselves and be ready for what's coming because no teams are gonna make it easy for us. Yes, it's still in our hands, but we've got to we've got to focus on the job. Yeah, as you said, form has been good up until today. How important is it that you bounce back from this on Good Friday going into a busy Easter period? Yeah, one hundred percent. I think we've got to use today's Kind of motivation and, and, and the benchmark of like this is if we if we don't perform to the levels that we know we're capable of, every game is going to go the same way. So we need to realise it, use it, and hopefully you can bounce back from it on um, next week and get a, get a positive direction, a positive result going in the right direction. Six games to go and things are still in your hands. I'm guessing that's the main takeaway from you lot. Yeah, 100%. We've, we've still got the opportunities to kind of take the take the take it away. We need to be so we need to refocus, need to regather, get together as a group and. And, and bounce back to Pride Park and um, have, a, have a real positive performance on the front foot and like you say not give teams and clubs opportunities to kind of do what they want to do so it's in our hands still which is which is the most important thing it's the way you want to be but we know, we know we've got to be we've got to be better There is a Martin Waghorn our results from League One today just the three games Burton losing at home to Port Vale that is a massive win uh, for Darren Moore and it really drags Burton into the relegation scrap as well. We'll show you the table in just a second. Uh, Stephen has got a 96th minute equaliser away at Carlisle. Could be a big point for them uh, in the playoff race. The table then, uh, not much changes from uh, Derby's perspective, except they've played a game more, still five points behind uh, Portsmouth, four clear of Bolton. Uh, and seven clear of both Peterborough and Barnsley, but they now have two games in hand on the Rams. Stevenage uh, just a point outside the top six, having now played the same number of games as Oxford, uh, Lincoln and Blackpool. At the other end, Port Vale uh, dragging themselves to within three points of safety, and they have that game in hand over Burton as well. Cheltenham with two games in hand over the Brewers. Uh, Martin Patterson might have a fight on his hands to keep Burton out of danger. That's all from us for now. If you want more reaction to today's game, it'll be on the website, dcfc.co.uk. We're back Friday with another massive game, Blackpool visiting Pride Park Stadium. Until then, from me, Barks and the team, goodbye.